I've just been amazed at your personal transformational journey, whether it's from the healing process that you've went through, your perspective on like energy, spirituality. I just feel like you're someone that's had this incredible transformative story the last few years in the middle of COVID, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a lot of people have had transformational journeys in the last couple of years and kind of went down routes that they weren't expecting to go on. And I feel like you're kind of the definition of that too. So I would love for you to take the listeners back where you were a couple of years ago, maybe around the time of the root canal, was it? That mm -hmm. kind of triggered everything mm -hmm. for you. I think that would be a great place to start. Yeah, so... My uh, inner world kind of imploded really the week that we all went into lockdown. Um, I would say my symptoms that started to come to the surface were I was having insane hot flashes. Um, it like makes me laugh thinking about it. I would be downstairs in my kitchen with my kids getting ready for school, like declothing, taking mm -hmm. everything off. Like I felt like an inferno. That was not normal for me. I had anxiety out of nowhere that was skyrocketing. Um, I had leaky gut symptoms. Every time I was eating foods, my chin would start to burn. The corners of my nose was itching. I was breaking out in red little dots. I had very specific red margins of inflammation on my skin. Mm. This was all not normal for me and all out of a sudden. I think what's really important to note, and as you mentioned, the root canal is about a week or two leading up to all this. I had just closed um, a root canal procedure that I had done on a back, a back molar tooth. Mm. This was a tooth that I had originally had a root canal on 20 years prior. Um, you know, I think when you're young, you, you don't know what you don't know, and you just kind of do what the doctors tell you. So I was sitting at my kitchen counter one day, and I had a little bit of a, uh, like a twinge in my tooth when I was eating. Called my local dentist. She said, come on in. We'll get an x-ray. I went in. Sure enough, they shot, there was like a little bit of black shading at the top of the root. She said, no big deal. We'll do another root canal. Great. Sign me up. How quick can we get this done? go through the whole procedure of the second root canal. Um, it got closed up and then that's when things started to sprout and things started to get um, a little crazy with my health. Going into lockdown, I had no access to any doctors. Um, I was doing everything via Zoom, which was really, really frustrating for me, especially I think being a very OCD, resourceful person, not having access to somebody trying to figure this out and help me was really, really testing me. Mm -hmm. Eventually, when things started to open up, I was able to get into the dermatologist's office. Um, I specifically saw three different dermatologists. Two of the three dermatologists um, spoke in very absolute terms to me. Um, this is presenting as mild rosacea. There's nothing you can do about this. This happens to a lot of women in their late 30s, early 40s. Here are some steroid creams. Here are some other topical creams. Here's an antibiotic if you flare up. Don't eat spicy foods. Don't eat dairy. Don't have alcohol. Mm. All the best. And it really pissed me off. Um, I felt like nobody was trying to help me. It was just a band-aid to a situation. The third dermatologist that I went to go see, the actual dermatologist couldn't see me that day. And they put me with her PA. And you want to talk about things happening for a reason. And I'll never forget when she walked into the patient room that I was sitting in and I was explaining what was going on. She like tilted her head to the side, almost like how like a puppy like looks at like their owner. Yeah. And I knew right then and there that it was game on and I was going to have to figure this out on my own. Mm -hmm. The look that she gave me was she, she knew clinically that she probably had to say the same thing, but she knew that there was more to this and there was a lot more behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and she's always kind of been on the same page with me since. And I left there and I was like, I have to start digging in and figuring this out on my own. So I started to dabble a little bit in functional medicine at that time. Um, I started working with different practitioners. I started learning about my body, learning about supplements, learning about vitamins. And as I was kind of going through this process, the tooth started up again. Mm -hmm. And I went back to the dentist. They did another x-ray and the infection had come back. And I literally lost my mind. I bursted into tears in the dentist's office. And I was like, I've been grinding out every single day trying to figure out what's going on with my health. Like, And you guys all keep saying it has nothing to do with this, nothing to do with this. Someone had mentioned to me at the time to check out um, a meridian chart. And what a lot of people don't know is that every one of your teeth is systematically connected to an organ and a system in your body. Ironically enough, the tooth that was giving me problems is directly connected to my thyroid. Mm. So hello, hot flashes and hormones, yeah. and also connected to my stomach. Hello, leaky gut mm -hmm. and all these food sensitivities. Um, I just, I, I just remember feeling so, so overwhelmed, um, and like nervous, like mm -hmm. just the fact that I really was feeling like I was on this journey all by myself. 
I came home from that doctor's visit and I went down into my basement and I watched a two hour documentary called Root Cause mm. um, on the dangers of root canals and just kind of like overall explanations on the importance of oral health in correlation with your whole body. How many notes did you take? Because I know you like to Oh, take I notes. went deep. Yeah. I went deep. I mean, the rabbit hole that I was down was dark and deep. Yeah. I literally surfaced two hours later and I came up to my husband. I was like, I'm pulling my tooth. And he's like, Lauren, that feels a little barbaric. Like, are we really sure we're doing this? And I was like, it's not even a question. I have to start connecting these dots. The tooth is going. Yeah. So he's like, whatever you want to do, whatever is going to bring you peace in this journey. I then started looking up biological dentists um, because at this point, I felt like we were entering another level that my mm. local dentist wasn't capable of handling. I found a dentist in New York City um, who was very much on the same page with me, went in, we had a consultation, and I agreed that I was going to do the surgery to remove the tooth. The day that I went in to remove the tooth, I was with the oral surgeon. And he's like, Lauren, listen, this is, this is how it's going to go. It's going to be fairly easy. You know, you're going to do fine. I shouldn't say fairly easy, but the process of it, like it's, it's going to be like a one, two, three step. He said, but my bigger concern is on the other side of your mouth, you have another tooth that you had a root canal in 20 years ago as well. I feel like all kids should not eat candy because I can like yeah. literally remember eating the ring pop. And when I cracked this, this one tooth and it probably affected the other one. And I had to make a very hard decision. Pulling your teeth is like cutting off a finger. It's mm -hmm. not an easy decision and it does feel barbaric. But I knew enough that I did not have the mental bandwidth to continuously worry if this other tooth was going to continue to cause problems in my system. So I said, pull it. So now I'm pulling two teeth on like a moment's notice. So we already knew that I had the infection in the one tooth. They cleared that out. That was fine. When he went through the process of pulling the second one. And when he pulled off the crown, immediately there was an odor. And two, he was like, Lauren, you made the right decision. He's like, you have tremendous bone decay. This tooth was completely asymptomatic. It was all hidden under the crown and I had zero idea. So his thinking was, it's not a matter of, will this like cause a problem? It's a matter of when will this cause a problem? And I'm sure for many people who have root canals, like you could go your whole life and be totally fine. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think it was a trigger point in my body. So I didn't stop there, though. My tooth journey kind of continued. When they did what's called a cone bean scan on my mouth, which is a three-dimensional scan of your oral cavity and your sinus cavity, mm -hmm. they noticed that two out of my four wisdom teeth sites had black shading in them. So when do people get their wisdom teeth taken out? I don't know, 12, 13 years yeah. old. I certainly was not concerned about my oral health care there. And I probably was more concerned about, you know, junk food and drinking whatever I wanted. And when you get particles of food or bacteria from your mouth in the sites, they eventually close up and it becomes the perfect breeding ground for everything and anything. Mm. It's dark, it's cold, it's moist. So I said, you got to clean them out. Like I need my entire mouth completely cleaned out. So I went in for that procedure and they had somebody on staff who was able to swab what was in those sites. And it was horrifying. Uh, there was the shingles virus. There was um, parasites. There was bacteria. And people would, most people don't even know to think that if you're having a health issue, mm. what's going on in your mouth and does it need to be looked at? So once I wrapped up the mouth situation, I then dove in head first in a 18 month long health journey, like physical health journey. Um, I signed up with a practitioner. I did back to back to back protocols. They were anywhere from 45 to 60 days. I worked through heavy metals, mold, um, parasites. Um, I, my goal was just to lessen the toxic load that was in my system. Mm. When I got to the end of the 18 months, I was completely burned out. Yeah. Um, I literally went downstairs one day and I was like, I will not put another vitamin or supplement in my mouth. I'm done. I chucked everything. And I think at that point is when I started to realize that I was really sourcing out my power externally mm. to too many people to try to fix me. Yeah. And I felt like the universe at that point was dropping bombs in my lap that I had to come inward and come back home to me mm. and start figuring this out on my own. So I took a complete break from the physical and I started to do the inner emotional work, which is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Um, I don't think people really realize when you sign up kind of on these wellness journeys that there's such a tie-in with emotional. Mm. 
Um, so somebody had introduced me to a spiritual psychologist, which I had never worked with before. I certainly had had my experience in like traditional therapy, but where I was mentally and spiritually in my journey, traditional therapy for me wasn't a right fit. And I had an awesome experience with her and the way she would present things to me, it felt very safe in my body and just to have a 30,000 foot view and perspective on things and why things might be happening and, um, you know, looking for the gratitude and things. And maybe this is happening for me and not to me. It was just, it really resonated deeply with me and really made me feel very, very safe. Mm. What would you say are the main differences between a spiritual psychologist and like a traditional Western psychologist that you had seen previous? Maybe you got a little bit of benefit, but didn't help you go all the way this, the same way this doctor was able to. So I think I often found when I was working with traditional therapy that I was still spinning, mm -hmm. like after the sessions, like the session would wrap and I would like be spinning on whatever I was worrying about. Um, I found spiritual psychology tapped into a higher source mm. that felt very hopeful um, and very real to me. I yeah. think it was more of a feeling that it generated in my body, the way she would talk to me and present things to me, like a warmness would come over me, a grounding sense would come over me, mm. and it just felt real. I mean, I guess when you feel it, you know, moving through your body, it just felt safe. And that was the only way that I could dictate whether it was working or not if we were on the right path. Yeah. So I continue to follow my breadcrumbs um, and somebody introduced me to a program called Primal Trust. Mm. That program single-handedly transformed my entire life. I did it for about 12 months. I'm still actively working through the program. It was founded by a woman by the name of Dr. Kathleen King, who is a physical therapist. She had debilitating Lyme's disease, bedridden. And she studied, she started to study under some really um, well-known wellness leaders and started to kind of take pieces of what she was learning from all these wellness leaders and started to put together her own program on what she think could help pull her out of her own condition. And essentially primal trust is re-regulating your nervous system through brain rewiring and somatics. Mm. And the whole goal of it is to come back home to yourself to find your inner safety. Yeah. So not so much looking for everyone else to fix you. Because as she would say, she's like, I was on every supplement imaginable. I was working with every doctor. She's like, but nothing was working. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked that program for about, like I said, 12 months. Um, my anxiety completely went away. Um, I find that when I have good anxiety or if, if I find it starts to spiral in a, in a negative way, the tools that I have in my belt to recognize how to bring it back down mm. um, it has been a profound, profound shift in my healing journey. And I think once when you're able to get to a place where you are able to self-regulate your nervous system, your body turns back online mm -hmm. and your body is able to start doing what it was designed to do.